Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 52 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 53 in the RSV. Unto the end, from Maleth, understandings to David. It's not known precisely what a maileth was, but it's believed that this verse refers to a musical instrument or chorus, something that would be used to sing or accompany a psalm. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. While many people doubt God's existence from time to time, or don't know how to prove that he exists, you have to ignore a lot of evidence in order to actually deny the existence of God, or to assert that he doesn't exist as a definite claim. They are corrupted and become abominable in iniquities. There is none that doth good. Foolish people who ignore the truth are often led into sin, and none of them is perfect. God looked down from heaven on the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, or did seek God. God watches people as they live their lives, and knows whether they have made a real effort to learn about him or not. All have gone aside. They are become unprofitable together. There is none that doth good, no, not one. Every single human being, up to the time this psalm was written, had committed some kind of sin. To this day, the vast majority of people are sinners. Shall not all the workers of iniquity know, who eat up my people as they eat bread? The worst evildoers, who cause the worst harm, should be well aware that they are not putting significant effort into holiness. They have not called upon God. There have they trembled for fear, where there was no fear. Instead of treating God with respect and looking to him for help, the evildoers have no fear of offending God, but are afraid of things that really shouldn't scare them at all, and wouldn't if they were living their lives right. For God hath scattered the bones of them that please men. They have been confounded because God hath despised them. People who focus on making their fellow men happy instead of doing God's will will ultimately face a much worse fate. The reference to bones here is most likely not meant to refer to the resurrection, since the book of Daniel hadn't been written yet. Who will give out of Sion the salvation of Israel, when God shall bring back the captivity of his people? Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Only one can save the people of Israel from a deeply unpleasant fate. When God rescues his people from slavery and evil, it brings joy to them. So, this is a psalm that remarks on the foolishness of atheism, mourns over how widespread sins are among people, about how few people put real effort into knowing God, and how severe the sins of the worst evildoers are. It describes how the worst sinners are worried about the wrong things, and finally, reminds us that there are serious consequences to ignoring the will of God when deciding how to live our lives. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.